Hey friends and neighbors, we're going to pick up with this networking video right where we left off on number two. So if you didn't watch the basic topology and you're a little lost as you start this one, go back and watch that one. So I'm going to clean up my interface a little bit because there's a couple of other things that I want to show you. So um, I just did uh, this particular command, arp-a, and that shows me what's in something called an arp table. Okay, so we're fooling around with ping here. Now, don't tell anybody, but uh, the ping command actually generates packets called ICMP echo requests. And a lot of times, when you're ever you're generating traffic on the network, you also get involved with this thing called the address resolution protocol. And that's sort of an important thing to remember. It's it's uh, sort of part of everything that we do, although it's one of the simplest protocols out there. So what I'm going to do is clear my ARP tables because I want to generate ARP traffic for you. So I'm going to take a look here. Now after time, these, uh, these time out, but I'm going to sort of speed up the process here. And I'm going to manually delete them. Oh, really? Let's try this. Doesn't want me to delete a particular one. Hmm. Oh, there we go. All right, there you go. I just learned something on Packet Tracer myself. Um, a lot of times you can um, use the regular arguments there. So there you go. Got a little egg on my face in this video, but I'm going to keep it in. Why not? Okay, so let's make sure that we're still in there. <laughs> there we go. All right, so let's do the same thing on the other ones. All right, so we're going to do now again. This is showing what these machines have already learned. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and clear. All right, so that should they should have nothing in there. Okay, good, 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 good. Now, uh, there's a couple of things that we want to look at in our in our interface here. One is the switch. Now, the switch is is this device that we use to interconnect other devices but switches also engage in their own protocols and their own operations so um, I'm going to pull up something else here called the simulation and actually let me close it and move stuff over here all right we're going to put it on this side now now the simulation shows me what's going on in my topology as it just sits there. Now I can sort of click through, right, if I want to play things, and I can see that there's stuff actually coming from my switches. Now what it does is every time a packet appears or a frame appears on the network, it shows you where it goes, right? You can see that these messages are going off, these pink ones. Those are spanning tree messages, okay? And the spanning tree messages come from the switch and their process. You can see, oh, look, we're processing, we're processing, we're processing. Excuse me. And then the simulation steps off to the next stage. Now, something else that we can do with this simulation is that I can actually think about the kind of traffic that I'm interested in. And I can apply filters. So if I take a look here under IP version 4, we definitely want ARP because that's what we're going to be paying attention to. And I definitely want ICMP. Now, I don't want any of this other stuff, but we're not building a topology that's going to have that stuff anyway. But if it was in the way, if it was sort of, you know, there was a lot of stuff out here, I might get rid of it. IP version 6, we shouldn't see any of that in this topology. Now, I'm going to... Um, really, there's there's a just a couple of things that that I want in this particular topology. So what I want to make sure of is that I have SDP, right? Because we can see that and maybe these other protocols. But the reality is that that's not really what we're interested in either. What we want to do is follow the simulation and we want to see how the traffic is forwarded. So later on, we'll sort of come back to these here. All right. So that's how you would edit that if you wanted to. OK. Now, if I'm if the simulation is running really slow for me, I can step through it quickly. 
um, I can also uh, just go back to real time again. And real time is this view of you know just what's what's happening on the network. So if I wanted to go ahead and ping, okay, um, then the and I wanted it to happen as it happened in the previous video, then I would just leave it in real time. But if I want to watch what ends up happening, okay, then I get ready to do my command and then run the simulation. And that would sort of slow everything down for me so that I could see what was going on. So that's what we're going to try and do right now. I am going to, let's close a couple of windows. I'm going to reorganize this a little bit so that you can see the command that I issue and we'll run the simulation at the same time. All right, so hopefully we'll have enough room. And what I really want you to watch for this, this particular video is watch where the messages come. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate traffic from PC0. And you're going to see it travel up to the switch and go down to the other nodes. Now, here's a really important idea. Some traffic will go to all of the nodes and some traffic will not. And it's up to us to sort of figure out which is which. So let's go back to my command prompt. Right? And the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to want to communicate. Let's do this PC right here. right? So the communication is between these two machines. And looks like we have a little bit of real estate here. We'll do that. PC zero, okay. We're gonna get our simulation up. And, oops. And here we go, I'm gonna run this particular command. So remember that I'm pinging, whoa, I wasn't gonna ping. We wanna ping. So that's what we wanna do. All right, so here we go. Now we can see that the packets are queued here. They're staged up. And I can just wait for this, right? It automatically runs. But let's step to the next stage. And we can see that the, this ARP message, there it is right there, goes up to the switch, right? And it's copied, and it goes down to both PCs, right? Remember that I'm trying to communicate between PC0 and PC1. But... PC2 got this message too. And an important idea or important question is why did that happen? So here we go. Now there's an answer coming back from one machine because only one machine was the one that I was looking for. And then that goes back from the switch and the switch sends it to the correct PC, not to everybody. And here goes the ICMP. Here's the message, right? And then, oh, this ICMP message only went down to PC1. And if I step through this, there we go. PC1 responds, goes up to the switch, and the switch sends it only to PC0. Now, this process would be wash, rinse, repeat. Um, but that's, that's what's happening. And so what we want to understand here is what's happening and why the switch is behaving the way that it is. Okay. Well, it turns out that if I had Wireshark here, I could look at the packets and, and see if there was something different about them, but I don't. So what can I do? Well, it turns out that you can, if I see this right here, so this is these are the staged packets, and then here's the transmission. If I click on one of these, it opens this other window. Now I can look at the sort of general included information here, but then I can say, well, here is the, PD, the, the protocol data unit or PDU information. And here is the ethernet part of this. And for this particular video, which I'm gonna close off soon um, because we don't wanna let them run too long, is that if I look at this MAC address right here, it's a crazy looking MAC address, right? It's all Fs. And that means it's broadcast. And so the rule with the switch is that the switch forwards broadcast to all ports except the port that it came in on. Now, 
the source address right here this is where it came from so if you take a look at right it says right here i wrote them down bdd241c1 hey look at that it's right here so this tells me that this particular message came from pc0 went up to the switch and then came down to pc1 and here here's our stages right pc0 to the switch switch 0 to pc1 and that's how it got there and they're this they're the same packet right if i take a look at you know the content of them it's just the same packet at a different spot in the network okay now pc1 responds with what we call an arp response and this one's different this one says where are you going oh well that's the destination address of pc0 and this is the source address 0b73 that looks familiar that's right here so that's the source address of pc1 so the response was not a broadcast it was actually a unicast uh, frame so the switch said oh i know that i have to send that not to everybody but to a particular node hmm how does the switch know that how does the switch know where pc0 was well if we go to our cli and we say show oops show mac address table it turns out that as soon as the pcs generated traffic the switch said ah let me look at your source address for this particular transmission let me see what port it came in on and i'm going to create a mapping between your MAC address and the port that you came in on. So look at that. Already in this, this video, we've seen two networking tables, the ARP table and what we call the source address table or the MAC address table. And this is how the switch knows how to forward things back and forth. So the switch has the rule about broadcast traffic and the switch has the rule about unicast traffic. Now there's one other column over here, and that is the VLAN. So one of the other things that a switch does is separate traffic out uh, based on a logical container called a VLAN. And we'll talk about that in another video, but if I take a look at the show VLAN command, I can see that by default, all of these ports are in VLAN 1. And that's what enables me to just connect the PCs to any port that I want and allow them to communicate as long as I get their IP addressing correct because they're all in VLAN 1. Well, there you have it. There's a little bit of basic processing by the switch. We know now what a, a switch is designed to do. Pay attention to broadcast and multicast and unicast types of traffic. It uh, splits things off by address type knows how to forward things to the correct port, and then also has this mystical magical container called a VLAN. Well, there we go. Until the next video, um, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and may your packets always reach their destinations.